I didn't join the institute directly as a lecturer. I joined it indirectly as medical officer for Kasangat Health Center, which was attached to the then Department of Preventive Medicine, which later turned into Department of Community Health, and finally became the Institute of Public Health. So as a medical officer for Kasangat Health Center, I was responsible to this Department of Preventive Medicine. They were actually my, the department was supervising me, and this was a field training institute, a field training establishment for preventive medicine. That's how I joined, and I served for two years. After serving for two years, I was joined I was advised to join the Department of Preventive Medicine as an assistant lecturer. Later on, I became a lecturer. Then I became a senior lecturer, and finally as an associate professor, after which I submitted my CV, which was adequate for my appointment as a professor. This establishment has passed through the stages of a department of preventive medicine, and then it became a department of community health, then an institute of public health, which finally became the school of public health. The numbers of students were rather small. Now, we had our own staff there, and I was serving under the directorship of Dr. George Saxton. That establishment was being supported by the Rockefeller Foundation, a foundation which actually had sponsored me to go for my further training, both in London and the USA. So we had a full staff of, we had a medical office, no, I was the medical officer, we had a health educator, we had a nursing officer, and uh, we had a maternity attached to the health center. We had a, a senior midwife who was responsible for the maternity and a number of health visitors. And uh, I think we had a sanitarian as well. So that, that was the, the full establishment. So we would have our own meetings because we are serving a, an area of about 18 villages and uh, we provided all the services pre which included pre promotive, preventive and curative services for that community. After my, my two year period, the late Dr. George Saxton, who was an American, uh, continued to be the director because his appointment was supposed to be for five years, and he actually stayed for a period of five years. As a medical officer, my appointment was for two years, and then another medical officer was appointed after that, and another one, until the, two, the five years had expired. Then the Kassant Health Center was taken over by the Department of Preventive Medicine. I think by then it had become an institute of public health. When I was a student at Makere University Medical School, the head of the Department of Preventive Medicine was Professor, Professor G.W. Gale, G-A-L-E. I don't know where he came from, but he was white. He could ha have either come from South Africa or from UK. He's the one who taught us. And he, he, at that time, it was a one-man department, I think. He was a very busy man. He had to go, apart from teaching, he was involved in the impact of the 
destructive bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II. And very often he had to go for those meetings. Then he was also involved in the city council. He was a very busy man, but he, we liked him. He was a very, very jolly man. Then when he left, Professor Rutuama, I think he was called J.S.W. Rutuama. He was appointed as the head of the Department of Preventive Medicine. He, he had trained here. Then following that, it was Dr. J.F. Bennett. He became the head. Then as I said earlier, Dr. S.J. Faze, F-A-R-S-E-Y. Then Dr. Virginio Ongom. Then myself was Professor Josephine Mary Namboze. And I handed it over to Associate Professor John Kakita. He was then an associate professor in maternal and child health. Should have been one of the, the core courses. Although an individual could easily choose to have it as a major, to major in that subject, but should be one of the, of the main courses, given that we have a large number of mothers and children in this population. Actually now it is being changed from maternal and child health to maternal, child and adolescent health. The problem now, people say we go to hospitals, we don't have medicines, we don't want, they, whenever they get sick, they go to the hospital. For what? But what, what causes them to be sick? The causes of, the, of, of their sickness has not been covered adequately. So we need more people to work in the field to help these people to improve their the facilities or the to, to improve their conditions in their homes and in, in the community, so that they don't get so sick as often as they, are, as they get these days. <laughs>